Oh, it's cool, right. Uh, should be nicely running. Uh, I'll give him a bit up to and then we'll get started. It's got cloudy outside now. Oh, frozen there. There we go, all back in. And the rainbow to say thank you to all the good kept the key workers in the NHS as well. Thank you for all the hard work they're doing in this difficult time. Okay, I think we'll get I think we'll get started there. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is James Beaumont, and welcome to this live lesson all about marvelous moths. Now, for those of you who don't know about Earth Live, these are a series of online lessons organised by the uh, Lizzie has very kindly agreed to let me loose on the web, and I'm going to be talking all about Marvelous Moth today. Oh, connection is unstable. Please try while we're trying to reconnect you. Okay, I'm just going to carry on. For those of you, so a little bit about me. Um, I am mainly a bird. I am mainly a birder. Hello, Mike. Um, I'm mainly a bird watcher, a birder, but I've been fascinated about all aspects of natural world for as long as I can remember, and over my time at the at university, I went to the University of Exeter. Um, I've been very lucky that I've been able to see all kinds of incredible wildlife all around the world. I've seen armadillos in Costa Rica. I've seen bacterial camels in Mongolia. I very nearly stepped on a highly venomous coral snake in Mexico just last summer on the planet, the peregrine falcon from here in Chelmsford, while sitting out in my garden. So it's very nice. It's very nice, Luke here. Oh, hello, Joe Cooper. Happy birthday. Um, so, yes, but as much as I love all the large the large wildlife that captivates us for captivates us many years with the help of Sir David Attenborough, I wanted to talk today about a group of much smaller animals. And I'm going to talk today all about marvellous moths. And why moths? Well, I think they're criminally underappreciated, personally. I see a lot of people who they're like butterflies and they're like, but they don't find moths particularly interesting and that upsets me a little bit because moths are just as fascinating and just as awesome as other insects as well um and this isn't helped when certain newspapers will post big headlines in the summer saying giant moth uh, and then i just think they're fascinating and awesome and brilliant and i love them and i hope that after this earth live lesson you will all love it too um so i was just going to talk about a couple of misconceptions to go to go a couple of misconceptions that circulate around moths and why that these aren't all strictly true um and then i'm going to talk a little bit about why moths are so important for the environment and for the planet and a little bit and a little bit about how you can help them as well um so the main so the first misconception about moths is that they can be differentiated from butterflies because they come out at night time well this is mainly true. There are lots of moths which come out at night time, but there are a lot of moths which come out in the daytime as well. I've got some examples here. I've prepared some, some little props there because I can't have slides while I'm talking. At the bottom here, we have this moth here. This is a six spotted burnet moth. And there's a few good sites on the Suffolk coast, which I like to go to when the weather's good and when there's not a lockdown happening. Where And you'll find these buzzing all over the place. Uh, they've got this lovely black wings with br six bright red spots on each wing, and these can be found flying, buzzing around in the daytime. This moth here, this incredible little moth here, you can see it right in the bottom corner here. This is a hummingbird hawk moth. This is a day flying species, as you can tell by its name. It hovers by flowers, and it uses its long proboscis. That's its, that's its tongue. It's like a big straw. It, it inserts that into flowers, rich in nectar. It it sips on the nectar in there, and then it'll hover off to a new flower hovering around like a hummingbird, hence the name. This is actually, this is a, this is actually a migratory species. They migrate up from North Africa, spend the spring and the summer here in Britain, and they'll lay their eggs there. So in the late summer, we'll have these migrant moths that migrated up, and we'll have our own UK hummingbird hawk moths as well, enhancing that population. Then in the autumn, some of those will migrate back to North Africa, and some of those, particularly if the winter is mild enough, they will overwinter and come out again the following spring to repeat the cycle. So, yes, those are some of the day flow moths. This corner here, we have a clearing moth, 
which is another example of a day flying off. I'm going to talk a bit more about the clearings in a bit. So all, more of that to come. So yes, moths come out in the day as well as the night time. Now, another main thing that people another main thing that people talk about with moths is that they're that they're all brown and a bit dusty looking. You kind of find you can find them in corners and sheds, you know. But as I saw those of you who were able to see from my little handouts that they are not they're they are not all brown and dusty. They are spectacular. They come in all different colours. So this is this is these are just some of the moths that we get here in Britain. On this sheet we have this moth here. This is the privet hawk moth. This is the largest resident moth here in the UK. It can wings its wings can be about 10 centimetres across and fully grown. What else we've got here? This beautiful moth is a rosy footman. I don't know how well you can see it on your screen. It's pink. It's orangey pink in colour and it's absolutely stunning. This beautiful white moth here with a blacker with the blacker zigzag lines across it. This is a black arches moth. Again, you can see lovely spectacular patterning. Looks almost tropical in its colours. This moth down here, this is a peppered moth. This is this with this black speckling on it helps it camouflage with lichen on trees. This is they all used to look like this. Then the industrial revolution came along. Um, a lot of the lichen died off of the trees with the pollution. The trees turned black with soot. And these moths, which were formerly very well camouflaged, were now suddenly much more vulnerable. Were suddenly much more vulnerable to predation from birds and other such predators. Then one day a chance mutation brought around a black morph of this, of the pepper moth, which was much better camouflage. And so it helped the pepper moth come through the industrial revolution where, pro where before it was a proverbial sitting moth. Um, now the airs are much more cleaner in parts of the country. And so this white peppery form is much more prevalent once again. I think there are still a few black morphs around. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I've only seen this morph here, but they are still both around. There are lots of moths which have different colour moths, often light and dark. We have another white moth with black speckles. Uh, we have another white moth with black speckles on. This is a white ermine moth, very pretty moth, nice and fl nice fluffy thorax as well. We have this moth here, this moth here, this pink and green moth. This is the elephant hawk moth. This is my favourite moth. I have it on my T-shirt, this fabulous T-shirt. This is my favourite moth. Out of place. I keep holding upside down. It would. I don't think it looked out of place in the Amazon rainforest. It looks absolutely stunning. But it's found here in Britain, all across the UK. Uh, it's actually a reasonably common moth. Um, excuse me. It's actually a reasonably common moth. So you may well have seen this at some point, or you may well see it in the future. Uh, it's a very attractive moth, and I absolutely love it. The hummingbird hawk moth and the six spotted bird moth. They're both very pretty moths as well. So yes, moths are not all brown and dusty. Just we do have lots of we do have lots of brown moths as well. Lots of brown moths as well, but there are lots of very colored as well. Um, another one is that they people talk about why they like butterflies, but they don't like moths is because they think that moths all look the same. They think that moths all look the same, which is a, uh, which as I've just shown you from there is not true at all. Uh, in fact, in the UK we have far more moths than we have butterflies. We have fifty nine species of butterfly here in the UK, and they all roughly they have lots of different colours, but shape wise they all look near enough the same. The skipper butterflies are a bit different, but shape wise they're all quintessentially butterfly shaped, but Moths take on so many different shapes and sizes and colours that there's just no real moth shape you can describe. Just take a look at some of these. We've got some moths like the white earth hold their wings in close, some like the elephant hawk moth and the peppered moth hold their wings outwards. Um, we have this moth up here. This is a pebble hook tip moth. This is a pebble hook tip moth, as you can tell by the name. Its wings are shaped like hooks. Um, some one of the this is the, that you can tell from butterflies because butterflies hold their wings behind them like that, whereas moths hold their wings flat against the wall. 
Um, but there are some moths like this moth. This is a lunar, this is not a lunar thorn, sorry, an early thorn, an early thorn moth. And this is part of a whole group of moths that hold their wings like this. There are there are other moths that do this as well. The lattice teeth moth, they're all out of the wing at the moment. They hold their wings up like that as well. Some carpet moths do it as well. And there'll be others as well that do it. Loads of different shapes, loads of different shapes of moths. Um, this moth here, this is perhaps the most, the dullest looking of all the ones on these sheets. This is a November moth, and as you can tell by its name, it flies in November. Moths come out in the winter as well as the summer, whereas butterflies are almost exclusively a summer group with a bit of spring and a bit in autumn. Um, moths, there are moths active and flying all throughout the year. Um, in terms of numbers wise, 59 species of butterfly, but moth wise, there are just under two and a half thousand species of moth here in Britain alone. There's 875 of the macro moths. Those are the larger moths that you well, uh, you frequently see, and about 1,600 micro moths. Those are the smaller ones as well. Um, well so I was going to talk about clearing moths, wasn't I? Um, these are the clearing moths I want to talk about. As you can tell, it doesn't really look doesn't really look much like a typical moth, so to speak. Um, they have evolved this body shape to look like wasps, these lovely clear wings and these thin, these thin bodies and these long straight antennae. This to them look like wasps to keep predators away. This is an excellent form of mimicry. It's the same thing that hoverflies do and that other insects like bee flies, bee beetles. They look like they look like wasps and bees so that predators leave them alone. If you see a wasp that's out and about at the height of summer on a lovely sunny day, but it looks a little bit weird, take a closer look. It might be one of these. This is a red belted clearing moth. There are other clearing moths in the same spit in the group. They all fly the day. They all look like wasps and they're all gorgeous. Um, yeah, so moths, way, way more diverse than, than butterflies. They're by a lot of insects, in fact, particularly here in Britain. Um, now, moths, not only are they super great to, super amazing to look at and super cool to to investigate they're also fantastic indicators of ecosystem health um so you so you can use them to see how well your environment is doing um they're very widespread they're abundant they occupy loads of different habitats like a lot of insects they're very sensitive to change as well so if there is an, if there is something that may be impacting your your environment your habitat then the moths and the other insects will be the first things to let you know about it. Um, and so a lot of so a lot of ecologists, when they're doing surveys, often, the, often they'll take a survey of the moths there to see if that, because if the moth numbers are declining there, then it's going to have knock-on effects for the whole environment. Excuse me. Um, and unfortunately, across the UK, moth numbers are declining. Over, research has shown that over the last 50 years, Moth, total moth numbers in the UK have gone down by about a third. A third of moths have gone. And moths, because they're insects, they're at the bottom of the food chain. They are food for everything else. They're food for birds, they're food for bats, they're food for amphibians, small mammals. Uh, moth caterpillars in the spring are very important food for, for young birds and nests. A lot of your garden birds, blue tits, your robins, they'll all be feeding on moths and their caterpillars. And so if we lose those, then we'll lose those small birds. We'll then lose the bigger birds and the bigger mammals and the whole and your whole selection of wildlife has gone from your ecosystem, from your habitat. Um, and this is mainly linked to intensive farming and industry changes. Um, and a lot of urban development and urban sport has resulted in the loss of the habitats, loss of the food plants that the larvae will feed on and that the adults will lay the eggs on. Um, Man-made climate change is also having a big effect on this as well. Obviously, it's affecting wildlife across the world. It's affecting wildlife across the world, um, but you can get involved and you can help. You can help moths, and it's actually very, it's actually very easy to do because moths are small. They don't have vast territories or big, or big complex social structures. It's e they're reasonably, they're not as as much by the one of the, one of the large animals in Africa. Uh, you can do it right from your home, and it may not cost you a penny at all. Um, a good one good way of doing it is just to let your garden grow a little bit wilder. Um, just let leave, let your grass grow a little bit longer 
have a few little wild, let the wildflowers come into flower. Moth will love that. Oh, excuse me. Moth will love that if his garden's just a little bit on the wild side. Um, if you have a hedge, maybe don't trim it every year or so. Just leave, let it grow over a little bit. Moths love hiding in hedges. And in the spring, you might get a bird to make a nest in there as well. So added bonus. Um, yeah, leave your hedge to grow. Um, if you want to get involved in recording moths, uh, there's all kinds of awesome moth recording schemes happening across the country. If you just go online, you should be able to find information about that. No trouble. The Butterfly Conservation website um, will have should have information about the schemes that are being run. Um, and they'll also have a tab on identify moths as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. So hopefully now you see, um, if you want to, um, if you want to follow, if you want to find, hear more from me, or oh, do some questions actually, I've got a few questions that popped up here. Let's see, what have we got? Mike Dixon asks, why do we not hear much on the TV about moths? Because I just don't think they get the love that they deserve. About moths, if you need someone to face it, Right now, plus what have you found in your moth trap so far in isolation? Well, my moth trap so far during isolation has not been performing particularly well, to be honest. I live in quite an urban environment. There's not many flowering plants around. It's not a great habitat for moths. Um, I caught I had a light brown apple moth last night when I was setting the trap up. I had a muslin moth yesterday and I had a very smart ruby tiger moth as well. Um, Conditions haven't been great. The skies have been clear and it's been quite cold at night. Moths, ideally, they like warm, humid, they're like hot, humid nights with a lot of cloud cover because it blocks out the moon and the stars. That's what they use to navigate primarily. Um, and then nice bright light. Nice bright light should hopefully attract some, hopefully attract some things. Uh, I hope that answers the question. If not, I'll have a, another go a bit later on. Um, thank you. Today, a this is a great mug. It's got moths on it. This is a death's head hawk moth. This is an iron moth. I'm not sure of the species. And I don't know what these two are. If you know what these are, do let me know. Joe asks, I've always wanted to set up a moth trap. How are to do that and when, James? When? You could do it whenever. There's moths, like I say, moths fly through all throughout the year. There's some wildlife, some moth trap supplies are still delivering. Um, you can go on to ALS, that's Anglia Lepidoptera Society. They sell traps there. Uh, there's all kind, there's other people who do traps as well. You get different kind of traps. Just find out. Obviously, some traps, some traps are portable. Some traps aren't, aren't quite so portable. Um, a good way to do it is to have a big white sheet as well to the sides or underneath. I haven't really figured out what is what's best yet. I tried the sheet last night. It didn't really work at all. Sean Manfredi, what's your favourite moth? Also shout out to Swallowtail Moth, my fave. I do like the Swallowtail Moth. My favourite moth, Sean, is this one. This is the Elephant Hawk Moth. I think it looks like it belongs in the jungle. It's a fantastic moth. I absolutely love it. Absolutely, absolutely love it. It's one of the moths that got me into mothing way back in the first time. Rosie Brown says, awesome, James. Moths are not talked about enough. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this Earth Live lesson. If you have, if you want to hear from from me, then you can follow me on Twitter at James Beaumont Two. If you, I've recently set up Instagram, still get as well, um, which I post about. That's at that's www.badluckbirder.wordpress.com. You can find out some of my bird adventures, nature some of my bird adventures there. There's a few moths that are thrown in as well. There's a few snakes as well, actually. I like snakes. Um, yeah, so I'll see you again. There's another Earth Live lesson happening at four o'clock. It's all about ocean sunfish. That's going to be good. So thank you for enjoying this Earth Live lesson and have a wonderful day, everyone. And see, we'll see you all on the other side of this.